Well, I left Eastern Europe, Hungary in 1956, end of 56 after the revolution. And I went through the border. I got to Austria and I applied uh, to come out here. I got to uh, Sydney 1957 and I started working in the restaurant in 1957. A big guy came in and he was spending money and throwing money around five, ten pound notes and uh, I walked up to him, you know, I was serving his table and I said, uh, excuse me, I said, uh, where do you get all this money from? I said, it wouldn't be a bank robber or something. He started laughing. He said, no, I'm an opal miner. I said, an opal bloody what? Never heard of it. And he said, next, next bloody break, holidays. He said, why don't you come over to South Australia to end the moo can? You can stay with me and uh, we, you can do a bit of digging with me. You know, I had the bug then. I kept thinking of dreaming of end the So one day I said to the owner of the restaurant, I said, oh, I'm quitting. I said, I'm going back to open money. He said, you crazy bastard. He said, you nuts. I said, no, no, no. I said, I had enough of Sydney. And uh, that's when I started mining. My name is Alexander Mendelssohn. I come from Endemuka, Opal Fields, South Australia. I'm a part-time Opal miner and, and an artist also. <laughs> It's a, simple, a very simple process. You will go to the uh, Department of Mines, wherever it's located, and you purchase a uh, prospecting permit. That will give you uh, the right to peg a claim, which is normally 50 meters by 50 meters, or a large claim, 100 meters by 50 meters. Then you have to register it before you put machinery on. Then the way you go, you know, you, you start digging it. And if you're lucky enough to get some opal, what you do is you, like normally, opal comes with the digging dirt, like a bit of mud or gypsum or in the sandstone, so it's got to be cleaned up. Then, once, once you saw that, class your opal out by color, size, and quantity or and quality, then you have to put a value on it. Then you have to sell it. Nowadays, we, we get buyers once in a while coming over, and, and that's your only chance to quit your opal, unless you want to do a travel to the city. It's a very beautiful specimen. Back in 1973, I had a friend up here, a South African. His name was Henry Swanapur. He was an artist. And I used to go and have a coffee with him. And I kept watching it and I thought, bloody hell, that looks easy, I can do this. So I got myself a little painting kit and I started doing a few, few landscapes. And I remember the very first one I've done was so bloody primitive, I was ashamed to show it to anybody. A guy walked in one morning, one of my mates, and he said, how much you want for that painting? I said, give me an offer, I can't refuse. He said, I'll give you five bucks. I said, you got it. <laughs> that was the start. And, uh, what I use is basically oil paint because oils I can manipulate and change the way I want. And my paintings at the moment practically are United Paintings in Germany, Holland, United States, England, you name it. On the way, I still love mining and when I get sick of mining, end of the day, when I get home, to me, it's a tremendous relaxation doing a painting, and it's a challenge. One main reason we're up here, we do our own thing. You feel to, free to do whatever you want to do, and uh, you're not uh, bogged down by regulations, rules and regulations, and, 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 and it's just perfect freedom. When you hit an opal pocket, you never think, really think of the money. In that instant, it's just, it's, it's a magnificent feeling. You're like, it's an achievement. It's a thrill of a lifetime. So it, it can be very disheartening at times, but it'll, it'll keep going. Like all the old timers, they used to tell me, you gotta be uh, determined, just keep doing it steady and you're gonna get it. And it still works, I think. Perseverance is the word. <laughs>